Welcome to another video. Today we'll be taking a look at the new Raspberry Pi Pico 2 board with debugging in Visual Micro. These bring the new RP2350 MCU to the Raspberry Pi family, with the Pico 2 having the same footprint as the original Pico, so you can use all the same shields as before. The new RP2350 chip has a more powerful processor and more RAM than the 2040, along with USB 2 support, and more GPIO pins are available depending on the model of board you purchase. It is also more power efficient and offers more state machines for improved real-time processing. As is so often the case, Earl Phil Hauer has released an update to the brilliant Raspberry Pi Pico board package to support these boards, and we've installed the very latest version, 403, into Visual Micro from the Micro Explorer window. If you need to install Visual Micro or learn how to install board packages, see the links in the description. We can use two debug probes from the list currently, the Pico probe and the RPi debug probe. The other FTDI based probes are unsupported at present and we will update when these become available. The debug probes are available as official boards and can also be created from older RP2040 boards using the instructions linked in the description. Once you have your probe, we can wire the Pico 2 to the debug probe using the wiring diagram shown. Then we can connect both to the PC using the USB leads. Once connected, you will need to install the Win USB driver for the correct interface, depending on which probe you're using, with the Zadig tool. Now that's done, we can go into our Visual Micro project and select the debug hardware option, and then select the RPi debug probe or the Pico probe, depending on which one you have. Now we can set a breakpoint and then click debug and start debugging to build and upload our code and start the debugging session. Once it's started, you can step through your code, add and remove breakpoints, and watch variables as your code runs on the Pico 2 board. Check out our other videos for more about using hardware debugging, and do drop us a like if you enjoyed this video. Let us know in the comments what we can do to improve our videos and any suggestions for future topics you'd like us to cover. Don't forget to subscribe for future content and developments in the software. We'll see you soon.